Thank you, Ari and Jim. That was beautiful. Good evening. I am Brian Atkins. I've been a practitioner here at Seaside for 12 wonderful years. And this evening I will be doing your reading. But before I do, I want to remind all of you that both Kathy Bacay and myself will be at the prayer room on the side for anybody that wants prayer after the uh, service this evening. So now I'd like you to all join me in turning within. And I know that God is all there is. God is that all-loving, all-caring source of divinity and inspiration that permeates everything and everyone. And I know that God is right here, right this very moment, expressing itself through each and every one of us here at Seaside tonight. And I know that we are all one with God. Closer to us than our breath, that is where God is. We are one with this sense of power and source of inspiration and divinity and wisdom and knowledge like the colors of the rainbow, each and every one of us is a unique expression of the divine. And I give thanks in advance in knowing that this service tonight at Seaside unfolds in perfect divine order. That is the words flow forth from Reverend Debbie McDonald's lips. Each of us is touched. Each of us receives a shift a new understanding, a new level of consciousness. And we, in turn, take that message out into the world and pass it on to others. And consciousness expands throughout the world. And so I simply turn this time over to the hands of God and know that it is perfect. And so it is. It is. So tonight's theme is mm. I am always enough. And so I chose the theme wholeness to do our reading from this evening. So I'm thinking of wholeness from Science of Mind text. I'm talking about on personality. Personality is but half expressed until we realize that within we are complete. Wholeness is the keynote to perfection, and self-esteem is not egotism, but is self-realization. Completion is from within and not from without, and no one can add to or take from that which is already complete. The soul and spirit are already perfect and whole. Mm -hmm. 
and on self-confidence and courage. Self-confidence and courage go hand in hand with real worth and are but the declarations of man's wholeness. There is nothing petty or little about greatness. And on oneness. Today I realize that I am one with the all good. My God and I are one. I cannot be hid from his face. I behold thee, O most high, enthroned in my temple of flesh. Thy secret place is within me. I feel thy presence. I hear thy voice. I rejoice in thy light. Today my body responds to the divine behest. Be perfect. I know of my perfection and wholeness. I am complete and perfect now. Mm. Now I invite you to all who have not lit a candle to come up and light a candle. And after that, Arya will lead us into meditation and song. Mm.
Beautiful. Thank you so much. It's one of my favorite songs. Welcome. It's good to see you here tonight on this summer evening. Ventured on out. You know, our uh, intention on Wednesday evening going within service is to give you a little midweek pick-me-up. You know, so we start with our meditation to just allow you to be in a place where you can get centered, do some of your own spiritual practice, and let go of whatever's happened between Sunday and now, and just uh, get renewed and refreshed once again. So, so I hope that that is working for you, and we're continuing to uh, hone and develop and change our format here, but we're really wanting to set that place where you can just feel grounded, and you can feel like you've just come here and, ah. Oh, Let it go. My talk title tonight is, I am always enough. Do you ever feel like you're lacking maybe in one area of your life? Like maybe you're not enough? Like maybe there's some area that you could do better or be more, have more? You know, I know know that I do. I know that there has been times in my life when I felt like uh, there's so much that I needed to do in order to make it. You know, to be validated, to be, I don't know, whatever I think that I'm going for. Even when I was a really young girl, my father gave me a little plaque that said, happiness is the journey, not the destination, because I was always wanting to get there, wherever there was, you know. And then, then I'd make it whenever I got there, but I really didn't know where I was going, you know. And, and I have two young adult children. My uh, daughter just turned 23, uh, a couple days ago, and my son's almost 20, you know, and it's interesting to watch and listen to the TV shows that they're watching 
the music that they're listening to, the advertisements that are geared at that age, the social media. They watch so much. They watch stuff on their computers more than they watch television. You know, they're constantly on their laptops and they're watching the YouTube videos and this and that and things that I didn't have when I was growing up. But what really gets my attention is the messages that a lot of those shows have. It's, you know, you will be enough when you have as much money as one of the Kardashians. You know, you will be okay when you look like the next supermodel, whoever that is. You know, or if you have the right clothes, then, then you'll be okay. You'll have made it, you know. And, and there's not a lot of emphasis on who you are, but on what you have. You know, that you can, you can feel like you're enough when you get to that place. When you get to that place of, of whatever that is, you know. And, and even when I was growing up, and, and, and I'm sure for many of you, we had those similar things, you know. If you were in the right group, if you were hung out with the popular kids, or what group you were in, what kind of house you lived in, what kind of car you drove, what kind of a job your parents had, what kind of car they drove, you know. It was all these things of being able to have some sort of status, to have some sort of thing like, I'm enough. You know, I don't know about you, but it was never like, taught to me that I was enough just because who I was. You know, I had to get something. I had to get the good grades or I had to, you know, something. There was something I had to do. And, uh, you know, as adults, I think we sometimes feel that too. Uh, when we have the right career, we'll have made it. When we get the BMW, when we get the Mercedes, when we buy the house in such and such neighborhood, then we will have made it. You know, the right relationship. All of these exterior things, you know, a, a few years, it's been a while, a, a while ago, I heard a speaker who, who did a talk, and the talk title was The Looking Good Family, you know, and I really related to that, because that was my family growing up, you know, we looked really good on the outside, mom made sure Easter Sunday we had the little white gloves and the patent leather shoes and the little Easter dress, and all five of us lined up in a row, you know, and off we went to Sunday church, you know, and and uh, we looked really good, you know, out in public. Mom and Dad pretended like they liked each other, you know what I mean? But you close the doors and go inside the house, and that wasn't really what was happening. But it was all, you know, was our front lawn trimmed? You know, what did your outside, you know, did you have the flowers planted? Was your house painted? All the things that were just these outside effects to make us feel good about who we were. So when I became a parent, what I really felt was like my number one job as mom, and I had the opportunity to be a stay-at-home mom, which was, was a real gift, but I felt like my, my job was to make sure that my children had self-esteem and self-worth. It was really important to me that they grew up knowing their value, that they were fabulous just because they were. You know, just because they were born and they were magnificent. Because we know, you know, when I heard all the studies and the socialization that we know that when girls enter school, their self-esteem goes down. And when boys enter school, their self-esteem goes up. Why is that? You know? So I really focused on um, letting them know that they were perfect exactly the way they were. Now, sometimes I think I've created a monster, two little monsters, because they really do like who they are, and they really do like who they express in the world and how they express. And they had the benefit of growing up in religious science. They had the benefit of growing up with these teachings, which were very different than the teachings that I grew up with. But from the time they were born, in fact, we started attending their seaside First we went to Unity, and then uh, we were looking for a church that uh, taught the same beliefs that we believed, and we stumbled upon Seaside. We stumbled upon Dr. Christian, and this was back when he was just adopting Trevor, him and Callie, and, and there was that whole energy of young families, and, and we wanted to be able to share our belief system with our children. You know, so they didn't come every Sunday. They didn't go to junior church all the time, but they grew up with this belief system, and they grew up hearing me talk about it. They grew up hearing their father talk about it. They grew up hearing Christian talk about it, and today when I hear them talking to their friends, they're talking about it, you know, even though they might not label it religious science, but they, they've got the principles, you know, and one of the reasons, as I mentioned, it was so important to me that I 
taught the self-esteem to my children or that I enforced that is because I had such low self-esteem. I came from that place of never feeling like I was good enough, never feeling like I was enough, enough of anything. You know, I didn't think I was pretty enough. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't think I was, uh, you know, from the right family. I didn't think I, I looked the right way. I was tall and thin and goofy, you know, and I didn't have you know, the right boyfriend, if I had one at all, you know. Um, it just, I, I, I just came from this place of not knowing who I was. And what helped me to heal that was coming into religious science, to starting to learn that I was perfect exactly the way that I was. You know, that I wasn't uh, a sinner. You know, because that was what I was raised with, that you were flawed. You know, from the time you were born, you had a mark against you even though I don't know what we supposedly did, but we had this mark against us that we had to spend our whole life overcoming so maybe we could get absolution and someday be happy in heaven, right? I don't know if any of you were raised with that belief system, but it was the belief system I was raised with. You know, so the idea that I was born perfect, whole, and complete, that I didn't have to do anything to earn God's love, to be whatever that was, that I could just be me was a foreign idea to, to, to me. It wasn't something that I, was, that I was raised with. I remember, I think I was a senior in high school, maybe my first year of college. I saw a little Xerox copy. Remember back when Xerox is <laughs> like little things you made? I saw a little Xerox copy of a little boy's face, and it was like a cartoon, and it said, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. You know? And that was like a novel idea to me. Like, wow, you mean I can just be okay with who I am? I don't have to do all these somersaults and this and that to, to, to be okay in the world. And uh, today I, I, I see that belief system as absolute insanity. You know, that coming from that place of believing that there was a God that is love, that is good, that creates us to be flawed, and then we have to spend our whole life trying to get unflawed, you know, that's just cuckoo, right? But that's what I was raised to believe. You know, Ernest Holmes, he says that uh, we are born and always will be perfect, whole, and complete right now. Perfect, whole, and complete. I use that in a lot of my prayer work. You probably hear it a lot around here. Perfect, whole, and complete. You know, we are perfect right now, right in this moment. There's nothing we have to do. I am filled with the peace, strength, power, and decision of spirit. The life force flows freely, peacefully, and harmoniously through every atom of my body. I am complete and perfect now. Ernest. Ernest Holmes, I am complete and perfect now. To come to learn that God is good and only good, and that there's nothing that I have to do to earn God's love. There's absolutely nothing that I am loved unconditionally. You know, to even fathom a supreme being or divine intelligence or, or spirit of the universe, whatever we call, want to call that, that loves us so unconditionally. You know, I, I think it's hard to grasp that idea of how much that we're loved. Again, exactly for who we are. You know, the only thing that I can even imagine in my life that comes close to it is the love that I have for my children. You know, I can't imagine anything that my children would do that would make me not love them. I may not like them. I may not agree with everything that they do, but I, I will always love them. You know, and, that, and that's as close as I can get to this idea of what that is to be absolutely loved unconditionally. Ernest Holmes all nature conspires to produce and manifest the freedom of the individual that it may unloose its own energy. We may be sure that God is for us. We may be sure that God is for us. You know, God's got our back. God wants us to succeed. Spirit, again, divine intelligence, whatever that word is that works for you. So then what is spirit's expectation of us? You know, what is it that we need to be in order to succeed in this game called life? What is it that spirit wants of us? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know, for me to just even try that on, it's like, what? There's got to be something. There's got to be something i got to do. Something that I have to change or fix or whatever. 
in order to be okay. And the truth is that there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing that we have to do. That we're just okay exactly the way we are. And however that shows up. Each one of us is so unique and special and individualized that there's nobody else that can do it just like you. You know, that each one of us is that absolute perfect expression right now. Our true spiritual calling is to be a human being, not a human doing. You know, and we've heard that a lot. You know, there's nothing we have to do. You know, we just have to be. We just have to be. There's a little book that I used as I was looking at this. And Dr. Christian has talked about this book before. It's called You Are Enough. David Walker. It's a great little book. It's a really easy read. It's a great thing to pick up and have. It just gives you those uh, aha moments. But one of the things he says in the, books, in the book is, you are enough, always have been, always will be. That's the title. If we don't accept the fact that what we are is more important than what we do, we will live a lifetime with the self-inflicted pressure to perform. I don't know about you, but I had that self-inflicted pressure to do, to do, to do. And I never could live up to it. So then I always felt bad about myself. It was a vicious cycle until I got like I didn't have to do it. <laughs> I didn't have to do it. You know, your self-image, you know, is to see yourself as perfect, whole, and complete. To see yourself as not lacking in anything. David Walker says it like this self-image. It is not a matter of the way we would like our lives to be. Everyone would like a wonderful life, but that does not mean it's going to happen. Why? Because we do not necessarily get to experience what we would like or want or deserve. We experience what we have embodied. We experience our image of ourselves. Your image attracts what is like it and repels what isn't. So the idea of just change our thinking, change our life, yes, but there's more to it, isn't there? It's we have to embody the very ideas. We have to embody the ideas of perfect, whole, and complete. This is where a religious science practitioner, which I see a few out there, and, uh, or a therapist, a good therapist can really help you. If, if in your life you are feel as if you're practicing these principles and you're doing your positive affirmations and you're doing all this stuff and you're still manifesting in your life things that you don't want to manifest or you're unable to make the shift, that's where somebody that can, that's trained can help you to see what belief system are you holding on to that is keeping you stuck. What idea have you embodied that you're not breaking free from? Are you holding on to that idea of lack? Are you holding on to the idea that life is hard? Are you holding on to the idea that life's a struggle? Are you holding on to the idea that I'll be happy someday? I'll never meet my partner. You know, what ideas are lurking there in your subconscious that we can't see? You know, and that's why we all have practitioners. That's why Dr. Christian has a practitioner. That's why I have a practitioner. That's why practitioners have practitioners. Because we can't always see clearly for ourselves. It helps to have somebody that can mirror that for us. That can help us to see what thoughts we might be holding. And sometimes we're really surprised, like, man, I thought I'd worked on that. And you may have. You know, but except from that place of higher consciousness, there's always more. There's always a little bit more to do. Ernest says this about practitioners, and I love this because I love practitioners. It is the practitioner's business to uncover God in every man. God is not sick. God is not poor. God is not unhappy. God is never afraid. God is never confused. God is never out of his place. The premise upon which all mental work is based is perfect God Perfect man, perfect being. So it is done unto us as we believe, right? Right? What we're thinking is what we create. That's what we say. Pay attention to your thoughts. 
But you know, David Walker in his book, as well as other New Thought teachers, are more and more saying it's more than just our thinking. It's more than just our beliefs. We also want to take a look at how our feelings create our reality. And so it's all of it together that's combined. We are told it is done unto us as we believe. Is this true? I think the issue is bigger than what we believe. What's important is the sum total of everything that's going on in our mind. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a lot going on in my mind. Which includes our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, attitudes, and even our opinions. All of these combined form our consciousness, and it's our consciousness that determines our experience. You believe that the things you do because you have consciously or unconsciously accepted certain ideas to the exclusion of their opposite. You either believe you are complete or you believe that you are incomplete, but you cannot believe you are both at the same time. Are you complete or are you incomplete? Are you perfect and whole? or not. I'm going to just quickly read 10 steps to help you to make this shift, to help you to make this shift into you are enough. And these are just everyday little tools that you can use to help you to make that change. Number one is to make the decision to change your story. Make that decision. You know, this might cost you a relationship, it might cost you a job, it might cost you a habit, but it's worth it to change the story, to change the story of your life, to change from that lack to enough. Create community around you. Attract yourself or create that community of like-minded individuals. You know, people who are vibrating at that same vibration that you want to vibrate at. You know, are you hanging out with people that think the glass is full, half full and the glass is half empty? Are you hanging out with your old high school buddies who, like, you have no longer have anything in common with them whatsoever? Look at who you're hanging out with. Create that community. You know, do your gratitude list. We talk about that all the time, but it's so easy to forget it. You know, are you laying in bed at night and listing the 10 things you're grateful for that day? It's really hard to be in lack when you're focusing on what you're grateful for. It's really hard to think that there's not enough when you're focusing on all the wonderful things in your life. So whether that's a practice that serves you in the morning or a practice that serves you at night, driving to work in the morning, just going over the list in your head, to just make that conscious choice to practice that gratitude. Appreciate and recognize the little things in your life. Everything doesn't have to be a big thing. You know, a couple weeks ago, I had a Monday off, and I sat down and made a whole bunch of doctor's appointments that I've been putting off. I made appointments for some repairmen to come to the house. I mean, there were little things, but I I felt really good about myself by the end of that day. Like, yeah, accomplished some stuff. You know, it doesn't have to be big, giant things. The little things, give yourself credit for that. Ask for help. Number five, ask for help. You don't have to do it alone. We have our practitioners here. You've had that special friend. If you were here on, doc- on Sunday, you heard Dr. Christian talking about uh, Brene Brown's book, uh, The Gifts of Imperfection. He's going to be speaking on that for the five more weeks now. But he talked about finding that person you can share with. Finding that person that you can trust, you know, with your inner stuff. Find that person in your life that that you can can share your stuff with. And surround yourself with people who help move you forward, you know, who are going in the direction you want to go. It's amazing how that like attracts like, you know, and how together we can do so many things that we can't do alone. Find and focus on the things that you really care about. You know, it's so much easier to say no to things when you're clear on what it is that you want. You know, it's easier to say yes to those things. How often do you find yourself saying yes to things that really don't serve you, don't serve anybody? You're just saying yes out of habit. You know, to find that place that you really want to put your energies. Hone it down for yourself. Say yes to those things and no to everything else. Number nine, this is a tough one, especially for a lot of us ladies. It's tough, and I know for some of you guys, too. Put yourself first. You know, that almost seems like, oh, blasphemy. But put yourself first, you know. If you're not taking care of yourself, who else is going to? You know, make sure you're full. 
Make sure you're not coming from that place of being empty. We have nothing to give if we're empty. So make yourself, you're getting filled up somehow in your spiritual practice, in your beach walk, taking a yoga class, doing what your soul is craving to do. And last but not least, be yourself. Be you. Trying to be someone else is really hard work. <laughs> you know, so much easier to just be you. You know, and to know that you are enough exactly as you are. I want to end with this uh, affirmation that he has in here that I think is just beautiful. It is called constructive self-talk. And for all of us that want to know that we are enough. I am an individual. No one has ever used their mind the way I have. No one has ever laughed or cried exactly the way I have. And that's because there is only one me for all time. My life is balanced between acknowledging my completeness and enjoying my creativity. I love that line. My life is balanced between acknowledging my completeness and enjoying my creativity. I get to do and be whatever I want. From this day forward, I take charge of my mind, what I think, what I feel, and what I believe. My life will be what I make it, regardless of the experiences that I've had or am having. How wonderful it is to be enough. Thank you. With that, I'm going to turn it back to Ari and Jim. Thank you very much. Song. I think we have a song that's perfect. <laughs> this is by Pink. Made a wrong turn once or twice. Dug my way out, blood and fire. Bad decisions. That's all right. Welcome to my silly life. Mistreated, misplaced, misunderstood, miss. No way, it's all good. It didn't slow me down. Mistaken, always second guessing, underestimated. Look up. Pretty, pretty, please. Pretty, 
pretty please Don't ever ever feel Like you're nothing You are perfect To me Thank you Thank you, Jim Beautiful Beautiful, perfect, perfect, perfect. We are each perfect, all of us. Oh, it is the time of our evening for our offering. I ask the ushers to come forward. Dennis and Jenny, thank you for always being here. You two are amazing. What would we do without you on Wednesday night? <laughs> Good to have you. So this is the time of our service where we are able to give from our heart. So knowing that all that you give helps to support the work here at Seaside, it helps in order to keep our doors open, to helps us to be able to do all that we do in the world. We appreciate it and uh, know that it is one of the spiritual laws that as we give, we receive. It's not why we give, but it certainly is a wonderful opportunity to just see how the law works. So at this time, will you just join me with the prosperity prayer? As I give thanks for the good now flowing into my life, I gladly share that good with others. The more I give, the more I receive. I experience a deeper consciousness of peace and security, for I know that I am in the embrace of a warm, loving presence, forever seeking an outlet through me. My cup runneth over. I exist in limitless possibilities. Thank you. announcements for you tonight. If you've been here on Sunday, you know what these little postcards are. If you haven't, please know in your program there's a postcard. It's made out to the Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. That's a long name. And Dr. Christian's idea and suggestion was, and all of you jumped right on and said, yes, let's do that, is to write a little note and send it to the church there and just let them know that uh, we're thinking of them and we're loving them and that we're here. So if you haven't done that, it's an opportunity to do that. This Friday night, Seaside's Got Talent is here right on this stage. We've got all kinds of fun acts. We've got Reverend Lori, I hear, is doing a three-minute stand-up comedy routine. That should be pretty good. Uh, Jan Hartman, our practitioner, is doing her singing debut. She hasn't sung live in front of people for 25 years, so she's going to be here. So come on out on Friday night. Tickets are only $10, and it's fun to see all of our Seaside folks share their talents with us. Uh, we have um, a couple classes that are coming up. We've got two one-day workshops in, on, in August, but we have Raima Montero, who's one of our young adults, is starting Tuesday the 21st, a five-week Latin dance class. So if you're wanting to learn a little Latin dance, a little salsa, join Raima, and uh, that's going to be every Tuesday night for five weeks. Next week, Reverend Lori Mack is on vacation. Reverend Bill Salisbury is going to be here. Most of you know Bill. His talk is Spiritual Residual Income. So that's next week, and I think Aria and Jim are going to be here with Bill next week. So you get, Oh, Aria, Jim's on vacation. I forgot. It's Aria. Jim's going to go and leave us for a few weeks. In two weeks, I'm going to be doing our first Going Deeper um, service. Uh, the fifth Wednesday of every month, we do a sort of a Taze uh, service. So this will be the first one that I'm doing with Aria. We're going to be doing a lot of chanting, and there won't be a message, but it will be a lot more meditation and quiet time. So that is the last Wednesday of this month. I invite you to come be part of that. I want to say thank you to everybody who makes Wednesday night possible. Our practitioners, Brian, Kathy, thank you so much for being here. Remember, they are available for prayer. Ed Reeves in the sound booth, thank you. Gregory on the podcast, thank you so much. And of course, Ari and Jim, I feel so blessed to be able to do Wednesdays with you. Thank you. Ginny and Dennis 
are probably out counting that money. So, but Jenny makes everything happen here on Wednesday nights. She has been here for years and years and years. Bruce is here to open the bookstore. Please check it out. We're going to the gift show this weekend, so we're going to have a bunch of new stuff coming up in a couple weeks. So at this time, I'd like to pray. So if you have anybody in your life that is in need of prayer, if you're in need of prayer, if anybody that you're just wanting to lift to that higher place, please bring them into your consciousness right now and just enter them into this wonderful, uh, this wonderful vortex of prayer. And so just turning within, knowing and feeling and sensing that one power and that one presence that is God, that is good, that is love, that is absolute perfection, knowing that there is nothing, absolutely nothing but love. There is nothing but goodness and joy. And I know that that is all that there is. And I know that I am one with this source. I know that I am an expression of spirit, perfect, whole, and complete right here and right now. And just as I know this is true for me, I know it's true for each one here. I know each one is perfect. Each one is that individualized expression of the of the divine, that absolute beautiful expression of love and light on this planet. And I know and I claim for each and every individual here, there's a perfect unfoldment in their life, that there's perfect health, perfect wholeness, that there's absolute abundance and prosperity in each one's life, that each one is given each and everything that they need in every moment to live a life of peace, to live a life of joy, to live, live that life that is just magnificent. And I'm knowing for anybody in our prayer request chest or anybody who's held in consciousness this evening that needs a healing, that it is taking place even now, that everything is lining up for that perfect unfoldment, for that perfect healing, knowing that there is nothing, there's no disease in God's world, that there's just absolute beautiful expression of perfect wholeness. And I'm knowing for each and every individual that is here, that that is their lives. I am so grateful to know this truth. I'm so grateful to be part of this spiritual family called Seaside Center for Spiritual Living that I know that it is doing the most magnificent work in the world. And each and every member here is carrying this truth out into the world as well. I'm so grateful to be part of it all that I just simply release these words into the divine nature of the law, knowing that it is already done. And so it is. Join me in our closing song. in the family room.